Hell yeah, man. Thanks for watching the video. My name's Clint from the Die Hard MMA podcast, and you can catch the replay of this entire video over on odds.com. Click the link below to go check it out, and let's make some cash. Let's let's try to isolate a couple of spots here. So first and foremost, they added uh, Kai Kamaka as a short notice replacement here on this card. I have no idea where on the card it's going to end up, so I just stuck it here at the bottom for us to chat about real quick. Jonathan Pierce was the guy that was scheduled to already be on this card. His first fight, his last fight, was a round one KO loss to Joe freaking Lozon in his UFC debut. And then we got Kai Kamaka, who really has been a decision machine so far in his career coming in here. I didn't get a chance to tape this one. I didn't realize this fight was getting uh, put on this card like that. I thought it was a, a canceled fight, not a late replacement fight. I don't know if you can maybe tell me anything on this one, but as of now, I need to hit the books. I have no information on this fight really whatsoever. I'm kind of in the same boat as you, but I did get to dust up on it a little bit. Um, first and foremost, let's talk about the line. It's minus 340, Kai Kamaka, plus 280, Jonathan Pierce. I think there's a lot of recency bias baked into that. Uh, Jonathan Pierce specifically losing to an aged Joe Lozon. But let's let's look at that. That was his first fight in the UFC in the backyard of Joe Lozon in Boston. So you have the crowd going against you already. That's that's stuff enough. Then he comes out to one of these Post Malone tracks where he's talking about, I've been waiting such a long time to get here. And he's like singing his heart out. And, and you can see that it's really kind of getting to him that he's finally making it to this spot. But not only is he making it to this spot, he's going up against a tough, tough veteran in Joe Lozon who you can say what you want about his gas tank. But I even went back and listened to my breakdown of that fight. And I'm like, I only give Joe Lozon half a round. And yeah. what does he do? He gets it done in half a round. Puts him away in half a round. <laughs> he lands these beautiful comment. Well, I don't even. I would beautiful is a stretch. I would say in terms of combinations that Joe Lozon was throwing, but he was landing perfectly on Jonathan Pierce, rocks and gets him in this awkward half Nelson position where he just starts wailing on his face. Immediately, Jonathan Pierce's eyes starts to blow up and his nose is bleeding. And a minute into your UFC career, this is what you're doing. You're you're lying face down against a veteran, just pounding on your face. Welcome to the big <laughs> show, kid. Exactly. <laughs> Not where you want to be in your first fight. Um, so, uh, yeah, that plus 20 definitely is dictated by that, in my opinion. And then Kai Kamaka, last time around, we remember UFC 255 against him and Tony Kelly, fight of the night, first fight of the night, giving us fireworks right off the bat. He had a couple great spots. Uh, Tony Kelly had a couple great spots. But you have to commend the, the efficient striking style of Kai Kamaka. And I, I think that's going to be big here against Jonathan Pierce, who seems to show some striking defic deficiencies. One interesting note about this. So Kai Kamaka is taking this on short notice, like we said, stepping in for Sean Woodson. He used to fight at 135 pounds earlier in his career. Up until 2018, December 2018 was his last fight at 135 pounds. Uh, he takes a year off, comes back at 145 pounds, and he's put together a couple wins since then. And now he's taking this fight at 155. So in terms of size, he's going to be slightly undersized here against Jonathan Pierce. That's something to keep in mind. It seems like Jonathan Pierce's strategies, at least from what I've seen on tape, the, the little bit of tape I've done, he likes to keep it on the feet, tries to outstrike you. But again, that striking defense might be a little bit of an issue here for him against a highly efficient striker in Kai Kamaka. So for me, if I'm backing Pierce, I'd want him to go out there, probably take this fight to the ground, see if he can grind out Kamaka, use his size, use his strength a little bit. Um, but personally, I'm still signing with Kamaka. I think he's a, a solid fighter. Would I bet him at minus 340? Probably not. The short notice, the size difference, all of that is a little bit too much on my head. So I'm going to pass on this fight personally, but I'd probably throw Kamaka in a couple of degenerate parlays or something like that. Nothing official, go. some lunch money. That's about it. But I do like Kai Kamaka too. And one more thing, he's not really a finisher. Most of his fights have gone to a decision, but he could potentially find a finish here. I think maybe with the, the poor striking defense of Jonathan Pierce, maybe we've sure. seen him land a bomb and put Pierce away. But I'm taking Kai Kamaka uh, not playing straight or officially parlaying him at minus 340. <laughs> hey, we had that card a couple weeks ago where all those round threes hit, right? This could be one where the, the volume adds up on him. Mm -hmm. I want to go ahead and just highlight real quick here our buddy uh, Dimitri sped here this is impressive that's very impressive to be up 40 on the main card but down 20 on the prelims that's not easy to do <laughs> and then Sharp. yep you know what we did we did our uh, our recap man so i hate to put it on the spot here but spot on picks can't be betting guys like right <laughs> oh hey i only put half a unit on the dude all right i put half a unit i thought i saw some little bit of value there he looked decent in that first round he actually he looked get, better than he didn't I expected, get clobbered man. he didn't get clobbered like people thought he would have but you know it is what it is
I got to tell you, early in the week, I was on the same page. So I'm just giving you shit. Um, <laughs> I, I actually talked about him being the value side early on on my Monday podcast. It wasn't until later in the week, the post way and show, like after that kind of stuff that I was like, shit, man, I'm overthinking this. It's going to be <laughs> it's going to be Buckley. But honestly, man, we got to give right his due here. He survived way longer than anybody gave him credit for. And he actually landed a couple of really good shots in that fight. Honestly, I might look to bet on right in his next fight. Because if they give him a step down, if they give him more reasonable competition, we might actually see him turn into a little bit of something here. I, I, I don't know what his potential is at at this point. Like when he's going up against guys that throw a heavy leather like Buckley or mm -hmm. aren't scared of him or... Or, or aren't at a complete disadvantage when it comes to the athletic side of things, yeah. he could potentially go out there and beat him. Like he went out there and styled on Ike Villanueva, right? Exactly. He's going to beat guys that are slower than him that don't aren't as physical or athletic as him. So if you keep putting him up against guys like Ike Villanueva, sure. You get more of those guys at 205. Let's not forget, he used to be a 205er. So if he goes yeah. back up to 205, he might be able to have a little bit more success. And hey, man, we're still in the COVID times. They need guys like him exactly. They'll bring in a couple of guys off the contender series that are from, you know, that lost their contender series fight. You know, guys like that on short notice. He'll beat them. He'll stick around. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely.